I have never seen a turkey in a tree. Wild turkeys can fly, apparently, domestic turkeys cannot. This whole trip almost didn't come to fruition. We had this thing booked. We actually drove all the way to Mississippi one day. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we got there, our son tested positive for COVID. I had a feeling like he had it. Yeah. I was like, I know he has it. Mother's intuition. I didn't want us to be stuck in a camper because who knows? Well, it was a month long was... trip. Yeah. We, we had booked everything out for a full month. Yeah, and who knows who else is gonna get sick since Ugh. we're all in the car together. <laughs> and I'm so glad that we went home because a few days later, our daughter tested positive, and two days later, I did. We explained the situation, and they helped kind of navigate the process for us because it wasn't just our reservation here, it was all the other campsites leading up to here and leaving here. And the ferry. And the ferry, which was actually probably the, the trickiest part because there was nothing available. And you, we had to book for a 50 foot slot. They gave us a little tip. They said, just call the Port Authority, stay on the phone, see if you can get on the standby list. They had a very good feeling that we wouldn't have to cancel our reservation and that they would be able to accommodate us. We knew it would take us a couple days to get up here. So after speaking to the Port Authority, getting on the standby list within what, 24 hours? Less than that. Found out Monday morning, like, around 11 mm -hmm. that we were off the wait list. Luckily, since we'd already planned the trip, we already had the rig ready to go. It was stock, everything was ready. Literally all we had to do was get in and drive our butts up here. So we jumped in and we hauled it. It was two 13 hour days, plus what was only gonna be about what, four, maybe five hours that last day getting over here. But we hit horrendous New York, Connecticut traffic and the whole trip ended up taking us 34 hours in three days, but we made it. We made it, I'm so oh. glad we made it. Stay tuned, at the end of this video, we're gonna have our list of top five things that we found to do here on the video. You gotta get him psyched up so he can go. Oh! <laughs>
And finally, as promised, our top five things to do when visiting Martha's Vineyard. But I do want to add a little asterisk here. Although most of our top five can be experienced in a day, if possible, we highly recommend staying multiple days and nights to truly take advantage of everything the island has to offer. We found that the duration of our stay allowed us to kick back and really absorb the island lifestyle. Akina Cliffs. Hop on a bus, ride a bike, or just drive on over to one of the most visited tourist spots on the island, the Akina Cliffs. Located on the westernmost part of the island, Akina features spectacular views and sheer natural beauty. They say the best time to view the beauty of the cliffs is at sunset. From the viewpoint, make sure to take the short walk to visit the first lighthouse on the island, the Gay Head Lighthouse, constructed in 1799. This lighthouse was carefully relocated 129 feet in 2015 due to erosion along the cliff. It is open for tours and you can go all the way to the top. While in the area, we encourage you to visit the Akina Cultural Center to learn about Martha's Vineyard's earliest settlers, the Wampanoags. To this day, the tribe still occupies the aboriginal land of Akina and counts 901 members, about 300 of whom live on the island. Beaches. Pack a picnic, collect seashells, take a dip, read, and soak in the warm sun on one of the many beaches of the island. There are quite a few private beaches, but there are enough public beaches to choose from. If you're a Steven Spielberg fan or an adventurous, you have to check out and take the plunge off of the Jaws Bridge, located on Beach Road connecting Egerton and Oaks Bluff. Parking fills up fast though, so get there early. If you are a dog owner, please note, not all beaches are dog friendly. Shopping. Martha's Vineyard has something for everyone. Toy stores for the kids, various souvenir shops, home decor, art, and more. Stop by any of the Black Dog stores for an infamous t-shirt or sweatshirt and check out the multiple vineyard vines to pick up town exclusive apparel. We had a great time perusing the shops throughout all the towns, but be forewarned it's easy to break the bank. Our daughter purchased crystals from Sanctuary and Vineyard Haven, pajamas for the family from BB, spices from the oldest grocery stores, veggies and fruits from the local markets. There are six main towns on the island, but if you're short on time, the big three are Egerton, Oaks Bluff, and Vineyard Haven. Egerton is the oldest and poshest of the three. Once a whaling port, this town now hosts some of the island's finest restaurants, art galleries, homes, and shops. After exploring the streets, make sure to check out the Egerton Lighthouse and take a stroll along the beach. This was our favorite of the three, as it was less crowded than Oaks Bluff but had more to do than Vineyard Haven. Oaks Bluff is home to the largest marina on Martha's Vineyard. Known for their bustling season waterfront, downtown nightlife, and historic gingerbread houses, Oaks Bluff has several beautiful public beaches, an abundance of wildlife, a golf course, and much more, making this a great place to visit. Make sure to stop and take a ride back in time on the nation's oldest platform carousel. Constructed in 1876, the Flying Horses Carousel is a must-see. However, be warned, sometimes the power doesn't work and the attendants have to manually push this historic contraption. Vineyard Haven is a short 10-minute drive from Oaks Bluff, but both serve as ferry ports to the island. When compared to its counterparts, there are fewer shops in Vineyard Haven, but there are some really great ones. Most of the shops in town do close early, so plan accordingly. Our campground, the Martha's Vineyard Family Campground, was a short bike ride away. You may want to check the weather though, so you too don't get stuck in a rainstorm like we did. So I'm recording because this is pretty funny. We rode our bikes into Vineyard Haven, my home was all messed up. And was it supposed to be raining today? Thunderstorm warning, starts pouring. So here we are, riding our bikes. Five miles back home. Food. It doesn't matter where you are on the island, there is always great food options available. And as a family that completely indulged in almost everything the island could serve up, we couldn't have been happier. It's also one of the few ways we encourage to support local businesses. Explore the farm to table markets or get fresh fruit and vegetables from the Morning Glory Farm. Drive out to the fish markets in Maneshma or grab a local beer from the offshore alehouse in Oaks Bluff. 
The Edgartown Meat and Fish Market has some of the best fresh seafood and steaks. And for those with a sweet tooth, stop by Mad Martha's and Candy Bazaar, which is one of our favorites, for some ice cream or perhaps some freshly made fudge from Murdoch's. For a late night treat, try the infamous warm apple fritters and donuts from Backdoor Donuts in Oaks Bluff. And don't get us started on the lobster rolls. These are an absolute must have at the vineyard. Our personal favorites were from the Black Dog Tavern and Seafood Shanty. We hope you enjoyed our list of the top five things to do here on Martha's Vineyard. Our family had such a great time that we have already started to plan our return trip where we hope to explore more of the island and bring other new and exciting ideas for you. Thank you for checking out our list, and if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. So long for now, and we hope to see you down the road.